In this video we will do a example problem involving sliding friction. It says a block of mass 10 kilograms initially at rest on an inclined plane with an angle of 40 degree inclination. Find the speed of the block after it slid 5 meters down the incline assuming the coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the plane is 0 0.15. So let's draw a picture. So there we go, we have an incline. We have a block here. I'm going to, like in all inclined plane problems, put my axis so that one of the axis lies along the incline. This simplifies the mathematics. This angle is theta. And at the very end, we're going to have our block right here. And we want to know how fast it is going, which will be Vx and this position will be X. Alright, it slide 5 meters, so if I make my initial position X naught equals 0 meters, then I've gone 5 meters. It doesn't have to be at the end of the ramp, it just has to be somewhere on here, 5 meters down. Now, I Unless I've done this problem a bunch and knew some other things, I don't know what the acceleration of this problem is. And on top of that, I do not know if it's constant acceleration. If it's constant acceleration, then I can use the kinematic equations and maybe I can find this speed. If it's not constant acceleration, I cannot apply the kinematic equations. Now there are other tricks in later chapters that one can use to solve a problem like this, including work and energy, but right now, given this part of Gene Colley, we actually only know about forces and acceleration, so we're quite limited. So, when you don't know something, when you don't know exactly how to attack it, what you do is start from first principles, things that cannot possibly be wrong. And one of those that you know that's never wrong is Newton's Law. So I'm going to draw a free body diagram. So isolate the body. Inventory the forces. There's the weight. There's the normal. There's no tension. There's friction. The block would slide down the inclined plane, so the friction is up the inclined plane. And this angle right here, that angle is theta. And then we need, of course, an axis. There's x, and there's y. So now I've got my free body diagram. So let's write Newton's law, sum of the forces in x. That's mAx. Sum of the forces in y is mAy. But by choosing my axis like I did, I have ensured that the acceleration in y is zero. I've made this a one-dimensional problem. The forces well, in X, the only forces that have components is this component of the weight, which is in the positive X direction, and it's the opposite side, so it's sine. So I have W sine theta, and this friction force, which is in the minus X direction, so minus F, is MAX. Over here in the Y direction, I have this normal force in the positive direction. And I have this component of the weight, which is in the negative direction. And that's zero. So this enables me to find the normal force, which is weight cosine theta in this case. Remember, the normal force has no guaranteed formula. You have to solve Newton 2 to find it. I'll call that equation 2. Over on the other side, I need to put in something about friction. But for kinetic friction, F is equal to mu k n. So I have W sine theta minus mu k n is equal to m a x. I call that equation 1. Now what I want to do is sub 2 into 1. So substituting equation 2, I have weight sine theta minus mu k 
weight cosine theta is equal to AX. But weight we can factor out, so I get MG sine theta minus mu k cos theta. Oop, I'm sorry, I left my M a minute ago here. Is equal to M A X. And we can cancel the M's. So what do we find? Well, we found the acceleration. AX is equal to G times sine theta minus mu k cosine theta. And we've done more than that. G is a constant, sine of theta, theta being 40 degrees is a constant, minus 0.15 times the cosine of 40 degrees. These are all constants, so most importantly, it's constant. And because it's constant, that means that the kinematic equations are valid. So, kinematic equations are valid. This means that V x squared is vx naught squared plus 2 times acceleration in x which is g sine theta minus mu k cos theta times x minus x naught. Now let's go back and look at for a minute what we had. We had 10 kilogram mass Turns out you don't even need to know anything about that. You need to know that theta was 40 degrees. You need to know that x minus x naught is 5 meters. It says it's initially at rest. Vx naught is 0 meters per second. And we need to know mu, 0 0.15. So we go down and put those into our things here, 0, Vx is the square root of 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared, sine of 40, minus 0.15, cosine 40, times 5 meters. Now, we'll need to take a calculator, and we'll need to uh, find out what that value is. So, let me get my calculator out and punch it here. 2, point, we're at two times 9.8 times sine of 40 minus 0.15 times cosine of 40 and then times 5 7.19 so assuming that I punch my calculator correctly, I get 7.19 meters per second. And that was the question asked. Notice how this combines concepts from multiple things. We've had to know about Newton's laws. We had to know about friction. We had to know about kinematic equations. This is called synthesis. As course goes along, you will need to synthesize more and more concepts. In real world problems, an engineer or physicist may have to synthesize and apply things from different fields. 
They may have to apply something from quantum mechanics, electronics. They might need to know something from chemistry. And they have to have that understanding and ability to figure out how to put the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle together. This is much like what a carpenter would do. They use a saw, they use a hammer, they use the right tool for the right task. So we do in science as well. All right, we'll see you in another video.